And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Air Journey webinar for Greenland and Iceland. I am Terry Pui, the uh, CEO and founder of uh, Air Journey. And today we're going to uh, review and discuss our upcoming exciting itineraries for our journey to Iceland and Greenland. The one feature today is a journey leaving next month, August 20th, but we will have uh, also the details of the two journey to the same destination, early September and a little later. A little technicality on the side, uh, the program here has been mute for everyone. Um, so if you have any question, uh, there is a box on the right side under the control panel where you can write your question and I'll be going over them at the end of the session and answer them. There is also um, a little sign over there called hands out. We have uploaded the flyer describing the three different journey, uh, one in August and two in September. So you can download them and uh, look at them at your leisure. This webinar has been recorded. And at the end of the session, we will send you a link, uh, which is uh, to YouTube, and you'll be able to review the webinar and share it with your friends, family, or whomever has an interest. So anything further ado, let's get started on the webinar to uh, Europe, uh, I'm sorry, Iceland and Greenland. So let's review the route. As you can see, we're going to be crossing part of the Atlantic, leaving from Canada, going through uh, Greenland then on to Iceland, capital of Reykjavik, and then coming back. So the journey itself, as the free departure I mentioned to you, first one August 20th to 30th, 10 days, second one September 16th, 6 to the 16th, also 10 days, and the last one is 10 days from the 20th to the 30th. So the start of the journey, it's 11 days altogether, from Quebec back to uh, Burlington, Vermont, it's 45 Right? So that's helped you decide how long the flight will last uh, based on the speed of the plane. We'll be visiting two continents, countries, and we will have a total of five destination cities. The itinerary itself is going to cover Canada at the beginning, Greenland, Iceland, and back to the United States again for Greenland and Canada. Uh, the journey team, whenever we organize this journey, we have the team. Uh, with different role and responsibility. Most important for you is going to be the journey director that you're on board uh, with the journey guide, the person to go to, the person keeping an eye on all the aspects of the journey, person delivering the uh, flight briefing before any uh, flying leg, as well as keeping an eye on what's happening on the ground, keeping track of the timing, and so on. In the office, we have the land department support team, they are the one confirming the hotel, the specificity of your reservation, uh, any allergy on meals and so on. And then of course, we have the flight department who's the one preparing all of the authorization, the overflight, the flight briefing, filing the flight plan based on your request and so on. So pretty strong team at Air Journey to help you out. So now let's discover the itinerary together. We meet in Quebec City and prior to that flight to Quebec City that you do on your own, we're going to be uh, covering the uh, uh, requirement to bring your airplane to Canada uh, and do the prep, uh, proper paperwork with CanPass, et cetera, et cetera. So Quebec City, uh, home place departure. We always stay at uh, Chateau Frontenac uh, in part of the old city, a pretty exciting uh, place, which was built back in the 17th century. And it's really at the heart of the old, old town. Pretty exciting. Uh, that's where you're going to meet your fellow participant as well as a journey director. Uh, and uh, we'll do a presentation of the journey, go over all the goodies, the uh, shirts, the, the backpack, the uh, uh, jacket, et cetera, et cetera. And also go over a very detailed briefing of what is expected to fly to Greenland and Iceland. One of the uh, things you might have not done yet is to uh, prepare a um, position reporting. We make that very easy, but we, of course, explain to you how to set it up properly and be ready. And then after all of that uh, uh, schooling of what needs to be done, we will uh, escape for a very enjoyable group and meet your fellow participant. So over the photo over here, you can see uh, one of the runway of uh, Quebec on the right side, the uh, Chateau Fontenac uh, from the promenade area. The downtown on the left side, city of old Quebec, 
and then a very uh, fancy and smiling face at one of the restaurants we use in Quebec City. The next day, we're going to be launching from Quebec City. So I'm going to go over the, this itinerary, which is slightly different than the one uh, we're going to be doing in September, August, slightly different. So from Quebec, the first stop people needed would be Kujuac to refuel, and then about 690 on my, and then we go on to Iqaluit, which is another 340. So most of the plane on the journey have a thousand mile nautical range. So should be able to go there, but if not, then we have Kujuak in between, uh, refuel and then move on. The next uh, part of the journey is Kangalooswak. So I'm showing that distance there for the people uh, for the month of September, because in August, we're going to be spending the night in Iqaluit before going on to Greenland. For the two other journey, we'll be going to Greenland to spend the night at Kangalooswak before going on to Disco Bay. Distance from Kujuak to Kangalooswak, 725 nautical miles. Don't worry, we'll teach you how to pronounce this fancy city name while you do the journey. So Kujuak, Kangalooswak, there is more to come. Uh, Iqaluit uh, is also known as Frobisher Bay. Uh, is a runway was built uh, in Canada back during the Second World War as a staging point to bring the equipment to uh, Europe. And we'll be staying uh, at the Frobisher Inn, nothing too fancy, but give you an in view of the uh, Nunavik uh, uh, Indian and uh, the, the place there. Might be lucky to see one, one of the white bears, depending if they are around or not, but that's certainly a place they can be uh, seen. Uh, and again, when we are in uh, Frobisher Inn, we'll be uh, doing a briefing for the short flight of the next day, and we'll have a dinner at one of the local restaurants. Next day, our destination is Kangalooswak, Greenland. Um, and um, it's uh, also an airport built during the Second World War as a staging point. Um, it's the only airport in Greenland at this time which offer a radar as well as a log DME, there's no ILS, but log DME approach as well as a, diff a GPS approach. Um, long runway, 8,000 foot, commercial traffic, um, two side, uh, and for the people doing the journey in September, we'll be staying at the hotel in Kangalooswak, right there in the main terminal. There's only one terminal, by the way. Dinner at a local restaurant. So you can see some sight over here of what um, Greenland is all about from the air. A lot of ice, lots of glacier. Uh, iceberg, as you can see on the photo on the left. For the people flying single-engine aircraft, TBM, PC-12, and so on, would need to uh, have on board a Gumby suit in case anything happened. Uh, need to be on board, doesn't need to be worn. We'll discuss that. And if you need uh, the Gumby suit, we will be, um, we have some of them available. Let us know and we'll ship that to you uh, home uh, before. Uh, again, the time of the year, we never control the weather, but uh, August and September, we should have a pretty uh, exciting uh, weather along the way. Um, the next uh, flight on the journey to um, Greenland in August will take us from Iqaluit to Kangalooswak. It's 485 nautical mile, pretty short. And then we'll take a commercial flight to Ilulisat. The reason we do commercial flight is that the runway is only 2,800 feet long. Uh, so only few aircraft can land and depart that runway. But that's something also we discuss in the prep of the journey. If you fly PC-12 TBM, uh, that should not be any problem, but we secure a backup on an airline uh, for the flight in case anything should happen. When we get to Ilulisat, I have to be honest with you, in all the journeys I've done in the past 25 years, this is a very uh, warm spot on my heart. It's one of the most beautiful places, so pristine. Uh, the nature is absolutely fantastic, quiet, no pollution, small amount of people. Uh, fantastic uh, experience at the uh, Arctic Hotel because you're facing not only from the public room of the hotel but your room, uh, the beautiful Disco Bay. Disco Bay has several uh, glaciers going in there. One of them is the fastest one on earth. It's moving like uh, 10 meters a day and you can see, uh, 10 meters an hour, you can see all of these icebergs coming in front of the hotel. Some of them start to melt, they roll over. It's a unique, unique sight. And uh, in order to see that closely, 
uh, we organize a, a cruise uh, right there uh, in the not in the glacier but in front of these icebergs and so on it's really magnificent rising it's a pristine beauty no doubt about it so on this particular um, slide here you can see the flight we are going to take over if we fly commercial for kangaroo sweat is a dash eight and then this is a kind of uh, cruise or local uh, uh, fishing boat we take and that's the kind of site you're going to be nothing like you can see in alaska a very white uh, very white ice uh, very old uh, pretty uh, pretty exciting and um, the glacier has been growing for the last four years when we were there last in uh, in june we had to face a little snowstorm on arriving so uh, a lot of a lot of ice and uh, reconstruction of the uh, ice cap uh, for the more venturous people, if you want to do a kayak excursion that can be organized, water is cold, obviously, but we do have access to wetsuit. And what you see on the right side is a new uh, Arctic museum, which basically share all of what has happened there, not only on nature side, with skeleton of uh, whales, of the local animal, uh, fox, and so on. Uh, interesting place to visit and interesting uh, architectural building by itself. Then uh, from Illulis, commercial kangaroo swag, and then we fly to Reykjavik, capital of Iceland. Again, 730 nautical miles. Uh, half of it would be over the ice cap and the other half of the uh, water. Um, Reykjavik, um, exciting destination. As you can see here in the background is the airport of Reykjavik. It's right downtown the city of Reykjavik. Uh, the commercial uh, airport of uh, Iceland is Keflavik which is a little further away, and I will have photos of that one further on the presentation. Hotel we use uh, in Reykjavik is the Hotel Borg. It's the Grand Dam, it's an Art Deco. And while we're over there, we're gonna to be touring a beautiful place uh, around uh, Iceland. Uh, we have an excursion to the Blue Lagoon. We're going to be doing the Golden Circle route. We're gonna see geyser, we're gonna see Gulf Force, uh, all what the nature has to offer from that country. Very interesting things, I always like to joke about it, is that Iceland is basically green, as you can see on the default photo, and Greenland is full of ice and usually iced over, but they changed the name between the two countries. Um, this is uh, part of the stuff we see, the geyser erupt uh, on a regular uh, basis. That is the big one, but they several them around them and we can go pretty close to them. Left side over there is the photo of the inside of the cathedral of uh, Reykjavik, interesting point. And then on the bottom right, you have the uh, famous uh, Gulf Force, which is always full of uh, water coming from uh, the um, glacier melting and so on. E e amazing, amazing sight. Then after a little tour, golden tour, we're leaving Reykjavik and we are on our way to Selfos on the south coast of um, Iceland. We're going to be staying in a place called the Hotel Isle. It's a modern building built right there in the countryside, and that will bring us closer to the ice of Iceland. And we'll be visiting some underground ice a tunnel. Uh, there's a landscape, there's a national park. Uh, and as you can see on the photo on the right side, we'll be underneath the, the glacier and have some unique opportunity for photo and the exploring the wonders. Uh, happening over there. So on top of there, a photo of the uh, Iron Hotel inside, the um, a drone on the outside, and then some of the excursion we do with this exciting equipment to be able to go on the uh, on the ice. Uh, Iceland is also known uh, for a number of horse, so we're going to be able to see that. If any one of you want to do horseback riding, you let us know. We'll make that uh, we'll make that happen. I brought that photo on the webinar uh, just uh, today because you might have seen in the news that there is a uh, volcano erupting. Uh, so the two uh, red mark area are basically forbidden to fly into it from, two from ground level to 2,500 feet. You can see right above on the left side the airport of Keflavik, that's not the one we use, and on the right side the airport of Reykjavik. Obviously, we keep an eye on all of these uh, happening. It is important for the health of, of course, our participant, but as well as the engine. You don't want to be ingesting any kind of uh, dust or anything like that. So we do keep an eye and uh, 
if we have to make changes, we'll make changes. One of our um, clients uh, was on a concierge this week to Iceland and uh, Greenland, and he shared with us uh, basically the view on his way landing in Keflavik of what the volcano is all about. Uh, interesting site. Um, it's going on and off. The, it's not like a cone point of view of volcano. It's basically an opening in the ground and you get all the lava coming out. Again, uh, if the volcano is still active, one, we are in Iceland, we'll make sure to uh, go and take a look, not too close, but on the ground, we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to, do, uh, to do that. And then um, a little bit over there, it's time to look at our return trip. To give you an idea, uh, the Reykjavik back to Kangalusuak is, of course, 730 nautical miles. And then from there, we go on to Goose Bay, and it's another 870. Uh, if the plane has the range, again, and the headwind are not too strong, the distance between Reykjavik and Goose Bay is about 1370 nautical miles. Uh, so it's doable by a certain number of airplanes. Uh, we're using the Blue Goose route, so you don't need any specific equipment uh, like um, the uh, uh, um, fan or uh, HTML, whatever, and so on. We can use that with the normal equipment of the airplane and no HF is needed. After refueling in Goose Bay, clearing, US, clearing Canadian custom, then we fly on to Burlington in the US, uh, clearing US custom for the last night together in Vermont, where we'll share uh, memories, photos, and souvenirs, and hopefully discuss your next air journey uh, somewhere uh, somewhere else. Back on the journey concept, a little more on beside the destination, the group dynamic is important. Usually we take only six airplanes on the journey because of the airspace usage, the parking, and so on. But we love for the participant to bring family members or to bring friends. Uh, and we can adapt them if they don't want to cross the Atlantic one way or the other. There's a number of commercial flights into uh, Iceland, so that can be done easily. Um, the pace of the journey, we usually spend three or four days in each location, so we don't leave out of a suitcase. Uh, we have plenty of time to enjoy, and we're not rush, rush, rush. Uh, we never do departure before 9 a.m. in the morning, weather permitting or any other restriction, but we keep a close eye on that one. We do all the paperwork, all the filing of the flight plan. We do all of that for you. So we try to minimize the time at the airport to a minimum. We have transfer airplane, so keep uh, keep that very easy on the, on the way. Um, and all the details are taken care of. If we took look at the pace of the journey, we have 40% touring, but 12% relaxing, 8% fuel stop, and 40% of uh, flying. So pretty good mix. I want to share with you also the temperature. That's for the month of August. Quebec 76.58, Kujuak 61.43. So none of these places in August will be showing any freezing temperature, but make sure you have layers, uh, you have warm clothes, um, and uh, also sometimes we can eat some rain. Um, so be prepared for that. We'll provide each one of you with a beautiful parka with a fleece inside. Uh, which will protect you against cold, the wind, and the rain. Um, a little uh, things on the side for the pilot. Uh, we have created a, an air journey application available on the iPhone and on the iPad, not on Android. And through that application, we can push uh, the documentation. The most important one is the briefing for each one of the flight. We have nothing to do except being connected to the internet and the application will do the work for you. On the flight briefing, when we go the briefing with the journey director, uh, we're going to be covering the following, um, the route to be flown, uh, in detail the departure, the en route, the arrival, the approaches expected, if there's any got you, we pay attention to that, and also on the ground. One thing we do on all of our air journey is to have the fueling done on arrival, so there's no surprise on departure. We are also very careful about weather, so we take a look at the forecast, the TAF, any no times. In the case of Iceland, of course, the um, situation with the volcano. We take a look at satellite photo, radar. Uh, we are doing this journey for fun, for discovery, not to maintain a schedule like the airline. The weather is bad, the weather is bad. We're not going anywhere. So be re rest assured, that's something very, very important for us. 
A little side note, when you go to Iceland, Greenland, you consider going to Europe. Uh, and what's happening with that is that you do need the European insurance requirement on the uh, third party liability, excess liability, for airplane like a Mustang, an M2, PC-12, TBM, Sears Jet, uh, on the jet, you will need to be showing between 9 and 10 million excess liability. For anything bigger than 3CJ4 or Phenom, you will need to be showing uh, 25 million. Uh, Air Journey has negotiated a program with the Lloyds of London and another insurance company in Europe. So if you have any problem securing insurance, let us know and we'll be happy to uh, steer you in the right direction. So now it's time for the question and answer. So let me see if we have any question. Yes, I'm seeing over here the question related to uh, uh, the uh, packing. Um, packing should be uh, done in easily manageable uh, bag. Remember, we might fly commercial from Kangaloo Swag to Ikaluit, so there's going to be some uh, uh, some limiting uh, factors uh, over there. Uh, there's also um, laundry service available at the different places. We negotiate that ahead of time. So you don't need to take a change of underwear for every day on the journey. We can wash them along. I mean, not we, but they can be washed at, uh, during the, the journey going over there. Um, the other question in regard of the um, weather and the timing. Again, at that time of the year, September, we should not have any um, surprise. But again, mother nature is mother nature. So we have to pay uh, close attention. Uh, the distance we've chosen for the different leg uh, offer option for alternate, and we do pay attention to uh, these things. Uh, let's look at Reykjavik, for example. We have uh, Keflavik and Reykjavik as airport. If both of them get fogged in for whatever reason, there's an airport to the north of Iceland called Akureyri, uh, and usually Akureyri is open when the two other airports are closed. Uh, Greenland has also a total of 17 uh, airport, not of not all of them usable by all type of aircraft, but there's several um, several uh, opening. Uh, one of them I didn't mention on the map is Nasa Schwag to the end of Greenland. Uh, if the weather is good and if the wind is not too bad, instead of going back for Kangaloo Swag, we could go back through Nasa Schwag and cut about 200 and or 300 nautical miles to the return uh, to the return leg. Um, what else can I say? Maintenance. Uh, Reykjavik has plenty of uh, maintenance. It's a staging airport for the crossing of all type of aircraft, so they do a pretty good job. Uh, there's also facilities in um, uh, Ikalut, if we go there. Kangaloo Swag, there's mechanics on, on site, but uh, uh, for the airline based over there, so they have piston aircraft, they also have uh, a jet and turboprop, so if we need any help, we can, uh, we can uh, secure all of that. I uh, do have a um, question here on single engine uh, piston, um, if we can join the journey. That's something we will need to discuss, but feel free to call us in the office and we'll be happy uh, to answer any question on uh, this particular uh, particular one. Um, another question on, on currency. Um, Iceland uh, uses its own currency. It's, it's part of the Schengen area for the, for the um, uh, immigration, but they have their own currency. Uh, Greenland also uh, deal with the euro, but US dollar will be accepted uh, everywhere. So that should not be an, an issue. And of course, in Canada, we'll be using the loony. So everything is fine, uh, is fine there. Um, I hope I did answer all of your uh, question. On the last photo here, you can scan with your iPhone and leave that on the, on the thing to register for the journey. And we'll go on from there. I will be sending you later on today or first thing early tomorrow morning, a uh, recording of this webinar so you can share it with your friends, enjoy it, and I'm looking forward welcoming on this exciting journey. Thank you very much for attending and see you soon on board.